North Korea. It's poor, dilapidated, and completely isolated. Or at least, that's what it's like on the surface. But if we go into cyberspace, North Korea is the most dangerous and feared nation on the entire planet. Kim Jong-un's government has a secretive hacking team called Bureau 121. Charges Thursday against an alleged North Korean hacker. The defendants are part of a North Korean military intelligence agency. Steal $1.3 billion by hacking computers. And creating the WannaCry ransomware. North Korea engaged in this attack. This attack. attack. The thing that sets North Korea apart from other countries is they have their very own state-sponsored hacking group. This group causes a ton of chaos and steals billions of dollars every year. But despite all this, you've probably never heard of them before. They are named the Guardians of Peace. Yes, that is their actual name. The Guardians of Peace are also known as the Who Is Team or the Lazarus Group. They have hacked billion dollar companies, governments around the world, private and central banks, crypto wallets and exchanges, and maybe even you. All this makes the Guardians of Peace and North Korea billions of dollars every year. But what exactly is the Guardians of Peace? They are the biggest cybercrime group in the world. Many other cybercrime groups exist, but in the end, their members normally end up identified and arrested. But this isn't a concern for any members of the Guardians of Peace. That's because they have state backing from the North Korean government, meaning that they will never be extradited to any country that wants them. We actually know the three main people behind the Guardians of Peace. It's believed the head of the Guardians of Peace is Park Jin Hyok. He is a North Korean programmer and hacker. He is said to have masterminded North Korea's hack of Sony Pictures, and was also a key developer of the WannaCry ransom virus. We have this guy's name, photos of him, and even his email addresses, but North Korea denies he even exists. Two more key members of the Guardians of Peace are John Chang Hyok and Kim Il. The Guardians of Peace are associated with Bureau 121. This is North Korea's cyber warfare agency, similar to the USA's NSA. They're also associated with Unit 180. This is a North Korean cyber warfare cell. It's a division of the RGB, which is North Korea's version of the CIA. But why exactly are these hackers so feared? After all, they're not exactly the best or brightest hackers in the world. They've been caught multiple times and their code is fairly basic. The reason why they are so feared is because of how big their rap sheet really is. Their first big hack was in 2009. It was dubbed Operation Troy. They used a computer worm known as MyDoom and carried out various large-scale DDoS attacks of US and South Korean websites. A DDoS or Distributed Denial of Service attack is where you send lots of traffic to one website. This crashes the website, which can be seriously bad if it's a bank or government website. It can lead to millions or even billions of dollars of lost revenue. But this was lightweight compared to what the Guardians of Peace had up their sleeve next. In 2013, their attacks began to get more sophisticated. They launched an attack named 10 Days of Rain. This targeted anything digital in South Korea. South Korean media sites were taken down. ATMs and banks were hacked, and critical infrastructure of South Korea was tampered with too. Many don't realize that North Korea and South Korea are technically still at war. They signed a ceasefire in 1953, but in reality the war between North and South Korea is still going on to this day. Later in 2013, things got even worse for South Korea. The Guardians of Peace hacked South Korean broadcast companies, financial institutions, and even an internet service provider. This meant a large portion of South Koreans simply lost access to the internet for some time. But the Guardians of Peace really came to prominence in 2014. This was when Sony Pictures was hacked by North Korea. This was because Sony was about to release a movie named The Interview. The interview starring Seth Rogen and James Franco showed them going to North Korea. The movie was a comedy, but they were very critical of the North Korean government, especially how the North Korean elites live a luxury lifestyle while most of the country is starving. They also showed Kim Jong-un getting blown up, which of course would be outrageous to the North Korean government. 
So, the Guardians of Peace stole large amounts of data from Sony Pictures. They leaked many damning emails, making Sony executives look very bad. They also leaked unreleased movies from Sony, and the personal information of over 4,000 employees. The US called this an act of cyber terrorism, and it really marked the Guardians of Peace as one of the most dangerous hacking groups in the world. Even though they were only hacking a movie studio, it was still an attack on the USA. This was something we had never seen from a state actor before. The Guardians of Peace demanded Sony Pictures not release the interview. Sony actually obliged and said they would not show the movie in theaters. This response was heavily criticized, as they were basically admitting defeat to North Korea. Even Obama called out Sony for this. For the first time, the FBI publicly named the Guardians of Peace. North Korea responded by saying that they had nothing to do with the hack, and said it was likely an American hacker who simply sympathized with North Korea. But I don't think there are many of those around. The FBI also determined that the IP address being used in the hacking was coming from North Korea. There were also some IPs coming from China. This is very normal with North Korean hacking. North Korea has a very limited internet. In fact, they only have what's known as an intranet. This is basically a closed off contained internet just for the country. Nothing gets in and nothing gets out. This means they have a very small number of IP addresses in the country. And that's why they sometimes mask their activities with a Chinese IP address. The Guardians of Peace laid low for a couple of years, but in 2016 they cropped back up again, and this time they came back bigger and badder than ever. In February 2016, they carried out one of the biggest bank heists of all time. 35 fraudulent SWIFT messages were sent by North Korean hackers. A SWIFT message is basically a message from one bank to another. For example, telling one bank to send a set amount of money to another bank. These messages were used to illegally transfer for nearly $1 billion. The money belonged to the Central Bank of Bangladesh. So, using the SWIFT system, the Guardians of Peace sent 35 instructions, but only 5 of these were successful. This meant that $101 million was transferred out of the account. 81 million of these dollars were sent to the Philippines, and the other 20 million was sent to Sri Lanka. The remaining 30 transactions, amounting to $850 million, were blocked. And the 20 million dollars North Korea sent to Sri Lanka was actually recovered, and some of the money sent to the Philippines was recovered as well. In the end, North Korea made out with around $58 million. Still a pretty good payday. The rest of the money was laundered from Sri Lanka and the Philippines to North Korea. But you may wonder, why were only 5 of the 35 transactions approved? You see, in the message, they claimed the money was going to an NGO named the Shalika Foundation, but they misspelled the word foundation as foundation. This made the banks very suspicious and they blocked the transactions, meaning that $850 million was lost all thanks to a simple misspelling. It's safe to say the North Korean hacker behind that misspelling ended up in a work camp. If North Korea succeeded in this, they would have stolen $1 billion, making it the biggest bank heist of all time. These guys are basically playing Cyber GTA. But in the end, North Korea only made off with around 58 million, which is still a lot. It really seemed at this point like the Guardians of Peace just did not care. Even though everyone knew they were behind these attacks, no one could do anything about it. You see, if hackers have government backing, the chance of them being extradited is basically zero. I talked about this already in my video on Russian hackers. Russian hackers do similar things, and despite the FBI knowing basically everything about them, there's nothing that can be done. That is, if they're working with the government, which in the case of North Korea and Russia, they are. But definitely in 2017, the Guardians of Peace took things way too far. They launched something named the WannaCry attack. WannaCry was basically the biggest piece of ransomware to ever hit the globe. And because this thing spread like crazy, it got out of control very quickly. What the virus did was encrypt all files on someone's computer. They would then have to pay a few hundred dollars in Bitcoin to get all of their files unlocked. It's believed this was made to target individuals in the USA and the UK and wealthy countries like that, and also some corporations too who could definitely pay this money. 
But the big problem was the WannaCry virus spread like wildfire. It quickly spread to poor countries where people had nowhere near this amount of money. A few hundred dollars in Bitcoin is not a whole lot to people in the USA. But in countries like India, that's basically like asking someone for a month's salary. It also spread to institutions like hospitals in the UK and universities in China. Of course, this caused massive disruption all over the world. And for all we know, the WannaCry virus cost people their lives. It affected around 200,000 computers in around 150 countries. And mainly countries which aren't even that hostile to North Korea. For example, Russia, India, Ukraine, and Taiwan. But why did WannaCry spread like this? Well, the way WannaCry actually travels is via a crypto worm. Crypto worms are viruses that travel between computer networks. Meaning that if one network in, say, a school is infected, then it will spread to all of the other computers on that network. You can really see how this would get out of control super fast. Now, of course, all of these Bitcoin transactions are visible on the blockchain. And using a simple wallet viewer, I can see how much money the WannaCry virus actually made. Surprisingly, it's not a lot. Despite over 200,000 computers being infected, only 163 people actually paid up. And in total, the hack made North Korea around $72,000. Not exactly a big payday, seeing as their previous hack made around $58 million. But the WannaCry virus hack is important for a different reason. That's because it's the first time North Korean hackers realized how important crypto could be. Using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Monero, which is even more private than Bitcoin, North Korea can effectively get around any sanctions levied against them. In 2018, Bitcoin and Monero began taking off in South Korea. Lots of young South Koreans were buying into these cryptocurrencies for the first time. The Guardians of Peace noticed this and began launching another attack. They used phishing emails which pretended to be from Hangul Office. Hangul Office is basically like the South Korean version of Microsoft Office. Many students used this and these same students owned a lot of cryptocurrencies. So these students entered their usernames and passwords into these phishing emails sent by North Korean hackers. As soon as they did this, they had their crypto wallets drained. And using this info, North Korean hackers drained the South Korean students' crypto wallets. In total, they stole around $7 million in just one year. One South Korean Bitcoin exchange named Ubit had 17% of all of their assets stolen by North Korean hackers. And they later had to declare bankruptcy because of this. A crypto mining company named NiceHash had 4,500 Bitcoin stolen that same year. That's around $275 million at Bitcoin's peak. In 2019, the Guardians of Peace launched a new malware named Electric Fish. Using this malware, they stole millions of dollars from companies all over the world, including $49 million from a single company in Q8. And if you thought the Guardians of Peace would chill out when it came to COVID, then you'd be wrong. The Guardians of Peace actually hacked various companies in order to steal their vaccine patents. But in March of 2022, the Guardians of Peace carried out their biggest hack yet. They stole $600 million, and they did it by hacking a crypto game. They hacked the blockchain network connected to a very popular game named Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity basically allows you to earn money while playing the game. A lot of people play this game as their job. They basically earn cryptocurrency simply from playing the game. The game's virtual currency, AXS, has a market cap of $1.1 billion, meaning that $1.1 billion of real money is in this cryptocurrency. And this is after they were hacked by the Guardians of Peace. It's honestly pretty insane how the Guardians of Peace have stolen billions of dollars over the years. And it seems that with cryptocurrencies, they have hit their jackpot. Cryptos are very unregulated and also fairly anonymous, meaning that it's even harder to go after these hackers. It's safe to say we have not heard the last of the Guardians of Peace. Unfortunately, cyber warfare is the future. If you don't believe me, it's what all of the world's elites have been talking about for the past two years. This is way cheaper and easier for North Korea to do. Instead of wasting millions of dollars firing nukes which simply blow up or fall into the sea, they can run a few lines of code and make millions, if not billions of dollars. 
Cyber warfare is not expensive to do. All you need is computers and talented hackers. And clearly with the Guardians of Peace, that's exactly what North Korea have. But now it's time for you to make your voice heard. What are your thoughts and opinions on this and how do you think we can stop the Guardians of Peace? If you want to check out my short videos, then take a look at my second channel. But as always, thanks for watching. I've been Charlie. Leave a like if you enjoyed and if you haven't already, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.